All right, so I want to thank you guys all for coming out. Um, also, please let your friends know about this group. Um, I'd really like us to fill this room up every single time. And my goal for this group, I want to do as little speaking as possible. I'd like this to be literally a group discussion. I want this to be a place where ideas flow back and forth. And so I'm looking for people who can do like 10, 15, 20 minute presentations. Anything Linux related, it can be, it can be Android, um, it can be you know, something with a server. If it's using Linux, we'd, I'd love to have you give a short presentation. I'd love to make a whole day of it where lots of people come in and uh, give little presentations. And so that's kind of my goal for today and for the, uh, the rest of the quarter. But um, today we're talking about Raspberry Pis, BeagleBones, Qboxes, and other tiny Linux devices. And um, in the last couple of years, Raspberry Pis, BeagleBones, they've become extremely popular as the price and power of these devices have hit that real sweet spot. And what operating system do most of these devices run? Well, it's Linux. And why is that? Well, for starters, Linux is lean and mean. Uh, Linux can be configured to give you exactly what you want and cuts out everything you don't need. You can run Linux with a lightweight, no thrills GUI, or speed up things even more by ditching the GUI completely and going com completely terminal. Um, and there are a lot of distros out there uh, that are extremely small. There's even a Linux distro that's as tiny as 12 megabytes. 12 freaking megabytes. Now, if you compare that against something monstrous and slow like uh, Windows Vista, it's just unimaginable. Um, and while we're on the topic of Windows, can you imagine paying $100 or more for a license for an operating system to put it on a device that you spent 25 or 35 bucks on? It's just, it's, it's absurd. So with, a, with Linux being free, both in the free as an open source and free as in you don't have to pay for it, it's the perfect OS for these sort of devices. Um, and next, the people who buy these kind of devices, they're the same people who like to tinker. They like to come up with unique and interesting ways to use these tiny Linux devices. Um, and the Raspberry Pi and other devices like it is really designed to be something that you can use in larger scale projects, something that you can take and you can make into something just awesome. So um, once again, this, this is where Linux triumphs. Because when you're dealing at that hardware level and you're doing these really cool projects, it's important that you understand the operating system that's running your system. Um, and since Linux is open source, you can view the source code, you can change it, you can optimize it for your hardware. Whereas Windows, it's closed source and you couldn't do anything like that. Um, but while most people will agree that these tiny Linux machines are undeniably cool, the main question that I get when people hear about the Raspberry Pi is, what the heck would I do with one? So with that question in mind, we're going to begin today's discussion. Uh, I'm, going to go off, I'm going to start off by taking just a couple minutes um, to go over some examples of what I found online and in din different Linux magazines of what people around the world have done with Raspberry Pis and other devices. And then I'm going to hand it off to a couple students here who are using this, these devices themselves. And you can ask them how they're using them and what they've done with them. So uh, this is the Raspberry Pi. It's extremely tiny. Uh, this one here is the Model B, and you can get this online for 35 bucks. Um, there's also a Model A, which is only 25 bucks, and I believe the difference between the Model A and the Model B is that the Model A doesn't have an Ethernet port um, and has one less uh, USB port. But both of them are really cool devices. They use an ARM processor, have 512 megabytes of RAM, and you can use them in a whole bunch of different ways. So I've got a couple slides here that just go over what other people have done with them. Um, this one was really cool. And most of these slides come from um, different Linux magazines that I read. Uh, there's Linux user, and then there's Linux format. And I believe Stu just ordered us a year subscription to Linux format, which is going to be up in the, uh, the student library up on the third floor. So if you want to read that, go ahead and check that out. But here is an example of someone who took a Raspberry Pi, they attached it to an RC car, and then with their phone, they're able to wirelessly control this RC car with their phone and the Raspberry Pi on there, which I just thought was pretty darn epic. Um, in this example, somebody took a Raspberry Pi and they set it up as a server, and it's a music streamer, and then there's a corresponding app that 
they can use on their phone to stream music, make their own kind of Spotify collection and stream it from anywhere in the world. Um, also, all of these examples that I'm showing you, these are tutorials from Linux Format and Linux User. So if you want to do any of these, you can. You can just get that magazine and there's step-by-step instructions on how to do this to yourself. Um, this is an onion pie and I really think this is cool. This is for those security conscious people out there. Uh, you can have all of your uh, data encrypted and anybody who connects to your Wi-Fi network would connect through this Wi-Fi hotspot which then encrypts everything and you can have it hook up with Tor and have different uh, nodes and so uh, ever since the Edward Snowden scandal and all that security has been on the mind and so for 35 bucks you can build your own onion router. Um, this is really difficult to see but what they did here is these long poles, they took 40 different Raspberry Pis and there is a, um, there's a little extension you get for the Raspberry Pi to add on a camera. And so they took 40 Raspberry Pis with those cameras and they did a complete 3D modeling, body modeling. So you stand in the center of this and it does a really, really darn good, accurate job of capturing 3D images of people. Um, oh, and then you can get an accelerometer add-on. Um, so if you, I, I don't know exactly what you would do with it, the, the possibilities are endless, but if you want an accelerometer with your Raspberry Pi, you can get an accelerometer for like five, six bucks. And then this, this one I think is awesome. Somebody built a complete uh, Raspberry Pi built robot and it's able to get input through cameras and you can build this entire thing. It's $150 um, in, uh, or 150 euros, so probably like 200 American bucks. And there's a tutorial, step-by-step -step magazine, on how to do this. And I think this would be like a great beginning to a thesis project. Like you build the robot and then maybe you partner with Dan Tappen to do some sort of like cool thesis AI project using it. I, I think that would be really cool. And you could probably get the school to pay for that too. Um, here's a really common use for the Raspberry Pi is as a media center. You can load um, XMBC on there. Um, do note that some people have had issues with like high def video sometime. It, it kind of depends. Um, maybe the Beagle Bone might be better for that. I, I don't know. But you can have it as a media center if you want. Um, oh, and here's an always on Torrance box. Um, it's, a, it's a seed box. And I, I've done this myself on a server where I have my own seed box on a server. I've never done it on a Pi. But if you wanted, you could set up your Pi as a torrent box. And then if you uh, use something like no IP, uh, which uh, updates, does DNS for your IP, and then you can send it. You could access your Pi from anywhere in the world. And then while you're at some place that maybe doesn't want you to do torrenting, you could log on to your Pi and then just have it torrent from home. And so that way, when you get home, all of your movies are downloaded and ready and waiting for you. Um, and that's a really, really cool thing. I've done that on my server, and I absolutely love it. Uh, somebody used a Pi to create time-lapse photos. Um, so when every like hour they would take a photo, which I, I thought was cool, and then they could store that on the SD card of the Pi, or they could have that, if you had a wireless adapter, you could have it email you photos. Just a ton of different possibilities. Um, you can also use the Pi to do your own retro game console. And what a lot of people have actually done is they've built arcade consoles and gotten old school TVs, um, not HD TVs, but old school TVs because it's got the, uh, what do you call it, the yellow analog? Yeah, AVL. Yeah, yeah, AVL. And, you know, nobody wants those TVs anymore. You can go to uh, Goodwill and pick up one of those TVs for five bucks. You build your own uh, arcade case and you can build your own arcade machine for under a hundred bucks, which is pretty sweet. Um, Sop on, um, throw on a large external hard drive and then connect it to your router and you've got a, a local NAS, you've got a file server. Um, you can also have this as a portable Wi-Fi spot. So if you went over to a friend's house or at the airport and you wanted Wi-Fi but you, they would only let you hook in via Ethernet for some reason, you could plug this in and then you'd make your own Wi-Fi hotspot that way. And so yeah, that was just some of the ideas. Um, so now I'm going to pass this off to some of the people here who've actually done it. Also, um, I am recording this, but I can only see the speakers, so if any of the speakers have issues with being recorded, Stu wanted us to record this, and 
he might throw it up on YouTube for the ACM site or something. So if you don't want that, just let me know, and I do not mind editing you out or turning off the camera. What he's saying is watch the Sue jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got several devices here to show today. Raspberry Pi. Um, my Raspberry Pi only does actually three things on my network. I use it as a headless server for external things such as a web server, etc. If something happens to it, I don't care. I just reflash and go on. Uh, it's relatively low uh, impact relative to uh, what it will improve influence on my productivity if I lose something on it. It's cheap, easy to replace. The second thing I use it for is it's basically the gatekeeper to my internal network. Uh, a cert I have multiple internal networks at my, uh, where I have it set up, I think also on my network. This, however, is a Qbox i4 Pro. 2x2x2 two by two by two about uh, quad core, 2 gigs of RAM, uh, gigabit Ethernet port, external SATA, etc. I actually use this as a file server. Uh, it's got about 15 terabytes connected to it right now if I had it set up at home. Um, for those who have seen my Facebook posts, yeah, this this is it. This is that server. Uh, it controls some other stuff such as uh, H, uh, HTPC, that kind of thing. However, that's not the big one. This is actually my work server. Full uh, Debian, well it actually has both Debian and Ubuntu server installed on it. Uh, it's actually an i7-4770R. 47, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, half a terabyte of solid state storage, all in this just little box. Uh, as for what I use it for, it's explicitly for primarily work, and that I will, uh, yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> It will take, I think the main project at work takes an hour to compile and run all the tests for. So you actually need something, something preferably mini, something small where you can just uh, SSH in, have a compile, run all the tests while you go do your own thing. Otherwise you're going to be wasting a great deal of time letting that sort of thing run. And that's all I had to show today. Hey Jared. What's up? So how much did each of those devices cost? Oh, this was, I th uh, let's see, the Pi was about 60 bucks with everything, the case, the SD card, the power supply adapter, the Pi, everything. This was about 120 to 130 before shipping, uh, but again, it's full quad core, all that stuff. This, over a grand. <laughs> so... And your, your Qbox, is that a, uh, what sort of processor is that? That's an IMX6, I forget the exact specification, but it's basically ARM. Okay, cool. It's fully compatible with the Raspberry Pi, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, it's yeah. completely compatible. So I only got the one device today. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll pass that around. Uh, I'll pass it around. This is my. This is what I run my cloud server on. Uh, it's own cloud. It's. I use it for the Manome project. We keep all our files that we don't want anybody else to see. It gets stored on there. Um, I don't have an external hard drive. You, you can use one if you have a lot of files you're trying to back up. But when you just have a, a small set of files, I just stick with the. SD card, back it up once a week. Um, it's real nice because to back up the entire hard drive, you pull it, you pull out the SD card, pop it in your laptop. Two minutes later, you got a full backup of your entire system. Um, I also use one to run PFSense on my wireless router before between my modem and my router to run as a act as a firewall. I also have a few others. Um, I have a couple set up to start a distributed processing environment, just playing around with some test test equipment. Um, these pr these uh, boards don't actually have a processor on them. It's, there's a pro processor emulated using FPGA technology, so that's how they can fit the RAM processor, your uh, GPU, all on that one chip. Um, you can overclock them. They actually run kind of hot. I have a full heat sink kit with this one. I even have some very tiny fans to run on top of those heat sinks. 
So I overclocked it to about 900 megahertz, but it still runs a little hot. Uh, with the fan running at full speed, I can run it to a full gig, but I usually don't run it for very long because they'll burn out. Um, they're nifty little devices. I really like them. I'm waiting for Samsung to drop their new processor and for, I know Raspberry is looking into Samsung's new processor, which is a dual core processor for, when, for their, your low computing needs. But on top of both of these processors sits a quad core, so when you really need some processing power, you can fire up the, uh, both those quad cores and really get some stuff done. So I know Raspberry would really like to replace their FPGA with one of those Samsung processors, but I'm getting the feeling that Samsung, because this FPGA is developed by Samsung too, so I'm, I'm guessing that they're coming out with a new FPGA emula emulating this uh, dual core to quad to uh, eight core processor. Uh, I think I've spent maybe 50 bucks on this guy. Um, I got the, S the 16 gig SD card super cheap all through eBay. Um, but I, prob I probably have, I probably bought 10 of those boards. I've burned out two, lost one in a quadcopter experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was putting everything together and I was doing some initial, initial testing and um, I learned why that when most quadcopter tests are being performed, they don't actually hook up a battery. They hook up a power cable that if it starts to fly off, power cable comes unhooked, it falls to the ground. I used a battery, so <laughs> it started going up and I had no way to tell it to come back. Um, I would like to make a server that uses close to 10 of these raspberries. One raspberry would take the incoming requests, pass these requests down to other raspberries to do the processing, and then you'd have some outbound raspberries that sends the data out, but might save that for a thesis project. How about compatibility? Have you run into any issues with um, any Wi-Fi adapters or keyboards? Does everything work pretty well with it? Or? Um, the USB on these guys is very low power, so if you want to do anything outside of a wired keyboard and mouse, you're going to need an extra, uh, a self-powered USB. And I usually run a lot of a lot of different stuff off the USB. So I, every Raspberry, I've almost everyone except for the quadcopter and my PF Sense Raspberry uh, has an external self-powered USB hub. But that's about the only problem I've run into. There is a list on Wikipedia under the Raspberry of Wi-Fi adapters that do have problems communicating with the Raspberry, but there's not many in there. Um, the ones I looked at were kind of off-brand. I wouldn't buy them in the first place. And the ones that I, I do have a couple of Wi-Fi adapters because up in the office I can't have a, a switch to run more than one. So I got some Wi-Fi adapters to throw up on the self-powered USB hub that will connect Wi-Fi. I'm going to test that out probably next Monday. I think that's about it from my Raspberry Pi. <laughs>